If you want to learn Blender, be prepared for shortcuts. You're going to have to learn a lot of them. I don't know or use all of them, but in this video I'm going to show you some of the shortcuts that I use often. If you have a numpad, you can use the keys over here, but if your computer doesn't have one, you can use the numbers above the keyboard. In an empty Blender scene, first thing to do, edit, preferences, go to input, you can select emulate numpad. That makes the one to zero keys act as the numpad ones. So starting in the top left, the first button is the tilde button. If you press the tilde button, it brings up a view wheel. You can easily access all the different standard views. You can use that with your mouse by selecting, or you can also see that there's an underlined letter on each of these. If you press the letter, it will select that choice. Pressing shift plus tilde activates the walk command. Walk command is like video game navigation. WASD is gonna control your movement. The view will follow the cursor as you move the mouse around. W moves forward, S moves backwards, A strafes left, D strafes right. Q lowers the camera position, and E raises the camera position. If you grab an object, tab to go into edit mode. 1 activates vertex mode, 2 activates edge mode, and 3 activates face mode. If you've set emulate numpad, then 1 and 3 are going to actually activate the front and right view. So a workaround that I found is that you can set it up to be Alt 1, Alt 2, and Alt 3 to be vertex edge and face selection mode, and it won't interfere with one being front view and three being right view. In this scene, there's a cube with all the different views put on each of the faces. One is going to go into front view, three is going to go into right view, seven is going to go into top view. Nine is going to invert your current view, so if you press one to go into front view and then nine, you're going to see the back view. If you press three to go into right view, nine, you're going to go into left view. Two, four, six, and eight are going to rotate these views 15 degrees left and right, up and down. One to go into front view, two is going to rotate your view 15 degrees up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six times will get you 90 degrees down to the bottom. Eight is the opposite. One, two, three, four, five, six times will rotate you 90 degrees up to the top. Four and six are the same for left and right. Pressing four, six times, one, two, three, four, five, six will get you to left view. And pressing six, one, two, three, four, five, six times will get you 90 degrees turned to the right. Going back to our default scene, pressing five is going to toggle between perspective and orthographic projections. Currently, I'm in perspective view. Pressing five will go into orthographic. Pressing zero will align the view with your active camera. Backspace is going to serve as a reset to default values. So if I press N to bring up the end menu, I'm going to move this cube. You can see that the location in the X and Y direction have been changed from zero, zero. If I hover over this space and press backspace, it's going to reset that to zero. On the second row of the keyboard, tab to the edit mode and switching back into object mode. Q will bring up your quick favorite menu. Pressing W will cycle through the selection tools. E doesn't do anything in object mode, but when you're in edit mode, selecting a face or a series of edges and vertices will extrude. Alt E is going to bring up a special extrude menu in which you can extrude faces along their normals. Alt E will also give you access to the spin command. R is rotate. Rx will rotate about the x-axis, Ry will rotate about the y-axis, and Rz will rotate about the z-axis. T toggles on the tool menu. Y is the y-axis lock, so again, if I rotate and press Y, it's, it's going to lock it about the y-axis. U doesn't do anything in object mode, but if you are in edit mode, U will give you the unwrap menu. In object mode, I will bring up the insert keyframe menu. You can select location, rotation, and scale, among different other things. When you're in edit mode, I is going to inset faces. If you have multiple faces, pressing I twice will inset individual faces. Pressing O will activate proportional editing. That creates a circle of influence that you can change with the scroll wheel. O turns that off. If you have a single object with multiple objects in it, pressing P in edit mode will bring up the separate menu, which you can separate by selection or by loose parts. In object mode, pressing Control p will bring up the parent menu, in which you can parent an object to another object. Alt-P will bring up the clear parent menu, which will clear the parent relationship. In both object mode and edit mode, A will select all. Shift-A is going to bring the add menu, in which you can bring in new mesh objects, curves, and other things. Control-A will bring up the apply menu, in which you can apply scale and all the transforms. S is for scale. It's going to scale about the object's origin. You can see that the object's origin is this orange point over here. So if you want that to be centered about the object, you can go set origin to geometry. So S will scale about the object's center point now. Pressing X, Y, and Z will constrain the transform to those axes. So pressing S and X will stretch along the X axis, Y along the Y, and Z vertically along the Z axis. D doesn't do anything in object mode, but Shift D creates a duplicate. Alt D creates a linked duplicate. Linked duplicates are identical meshes, so if you edit one object, it will affect the original object. 
F is going to fill a face. G is to grab. The constraints work here too, so G, X moves into X, Y, and Z. H hides an object, Alt H unhides the object. J doesn't do anything in object mode, but Control J will join objects together. In edit mode, if you select multiple vertices and press J, it will join them. K doesn't do anything in object mode. Pressing K will bring up the knife tool, in which you can slice geometry. I'm going to select all these objects, Control J to join. In edit mode, pressing L is select linked. If you hover over an object and press L, it will select the entire object. If you select part of an object and press Control L, that is select linked all. It'll select the entirety of the objects that you partially selected. I find this one is extremely useful. Z is going to toggle between shading types. Currently I'm in solid shading and I can toggle into wireframe. Pressing Z during a transform is also going to activate the Z axis lock. G to grab, Z will constrain it along the Z axis. X will delete. Control Z is also undo. X will also activate the X axis lock during a transform. C activates circle select. You tab into edit mode, press C. You now have a circle of influence. You can increase the radius by scrolling down. You can decrease the radius by scrolling up. When you left click, anything in the circle is going to be selected. Right click exits the circle select. I like to use this one with select linked all a lot. So I will select part of an object. Select linked all will select the rest of that object. Pressing V will rip a vertice. So originally there's one vertex here. If you press V, you can rip it off. So now you can create holes like that. It also works with edges, but does not work with faces. Control C, copy objects. Control V will paste an object to its original coordinates so you can see that there are two objects overlapping there. Pressing B will do box selection or a rectangular selection. If you are in rendered mode, Control B will allow you to render a region. And if you are in edit mode, Control B will let you bevel an edge. Control Alt B will turn off the boundary. Pressing N will bring up the N menu. That's where information about the object's transforms are located, as well as the focal length of your viewport. If you have an object with inverted normals, the shortcut for recalculating normals is Shift N. Selecting an object and pressing M will bring up the Move to Collection menu. You can organize your scene by placing things into separate collections. And if you want to, you can turn on the selectable and lock these so that you actually can't select them. Control M is going to bring up the mirror command. You can select the mirror axis in which you want to reflect it. X enter, and you reflect it about the object's origin point. Tapping into edit mode, I'm going to duplicate this face. Right click to reset it so that there's an overlapping face there. Pressing Alt M is going to bring up the merge menu in which you can merge overlapping parts of your mesh. Pressing spacebar will play the timeline. So you can see that the timeline is now moving and you have a frames per second. Let's say for instance, I moved to frame one, set the location here, frame 80, move the position over here, set the location there. When I play, it's now going to play the animation. Control space will temporarily maximize your current window in which your mouse is hovering over. Control space will also bring it back. That will work with any window. So you can do that with the timeline, go back, go that with the 3D viewport and return. The slash button is local view. This is very useful if you have a lot of different objects and you just want to edit one. You select your object, press slash, and now this is the only object. It's isolated by itself. Pressing slash again will unhide. Oh, I forgot this one. Control I is going to invert your selection. You can also hide it that way. Alt H to unhide. And pressing the period on the number pad is frame selected. So that will zoom to the selected object. Select my camera, frame selected. It brings the camera very close to that one object. The arrows control the timeline. So again, in the example of this cube, just moving slightly, I'm gonna go 10 frames ahead, move this object, put a new keyframe, move this object again, I to create a new keyframe. The left arrow is going to move the timeline back one frame. So you can see I'm moving the timeline along one frame at a time. Shift left is going to go back to the start frame. You can set that to 10. Shift left is going to go to 10 because that's the start frame. Pressing the right arrow will advance the timeline by one frame. Shift right arrow is going to take you to the last frame in the timeline, the end frame. Pressing up will skip to the next keyframe. So it's going to go from 1 to 10 to 20. And pressing down will go to the previous keyframe. Each letter is associated with a different command. But combination of control, shift, 
Alt and Tab with other letters will also create new commands. For example, in a new scene, here's my default cube. Press N to bring up the end menu. You see the location, rotation, and scale are all 0 and 1. If I move this object and change the location values, rotate this object and change all the rotation values, and scale. This object now has altered transforms. Alt is kind of an undo button. If you hit Alt G, it removes all of the object location transformations. Same with rotation, Alt R, it will clear all of these rotation transformations. Alt S will remove all the scale automations. Same kind of thing with other things. If you hit H to hide, Alt H will unhide. Pressing Alt Shift Z will turn on and off the overlays. Normally you can do that over here. If you hover over it, you can see the shortcut, Alt Shift Z. You can click that here or just press Alt Shift Z to turn them on and off. Alt Z will toggle the X-ray mode. If you have an object with extra geometry, Control X will dissolve that selection. Control Alt Q will change the 3D viewport into a quad view. So we have the top, front, right, and perspective view. Control Alt Q will also remove that quad view. Pressing Shift Tab will turn on snaps. Shift Tab will turn it off. If you open up your snap options, if you just left click, it will select one at a time. If you shift to left click, you can select multiple snap options. I tend to leave the snaps off because if you're moving it around, I'm going to snap this to the face here, GZ. Um, right now the snaps are not on, but if you hold down control, the snaps will turn on temporarily. Sometimes when you have a lot of objects and the snap is always on, you don't always want to snap to every little thing. So I tend to keep it off and turn it on only when I need it. Pressing Control Tab will bring up the Mode Selection wheel, where you can easily switch between Object Mode, Edit Mode, and the others. Shift S brings up the 3D Cursor menu. I use this a lot to place the cursor at the world origin and then move my selection to the cursor and vice versa. Control 1 will apply a Subdivision Surface Modifier with a level of 1. F3 brings up the search bar, so if you forget any of these shortcuts, you can just search for them. If you right-click on these, you can add to the Quick Favorite or assign your own shortcut. These are two identical cubes, but they are not linked instances. If you want to link them, Control L will bring up the Link Transfer Data menu, and you can link object data. Now, when you edit one, both of them are instances of each other. This will work also if the object has been altered. In this case, I'm going to extrude this center portion of the cube and then link the object data. It will turn it back into the original cube, so that's pretty useful. Control L is also a very useful one to link materials. It's always going to choose the material of your active object. I'm going to create a series of duplicates. Shift G is going to bring up a select similar menu. The one that I use the most is by area or by normal or by coplanar. It also works by type. So if I have a series of cameras and a series of lights, if I select one, Shift G and select type, I can select all of my lights. Same with the camera, Shift G, type. I can select all my cameras. And the last one that I can think of is Alt Control Zero. That's going to take your active camera and whatever view you currently have in your viewport is going to set the active camera to that view. So like I mentioned, I don't know all of the shortcuts in Blender. There are a ton, but these are the ones that I find the most useful. Feel free to screenshot this or download it at the Dropbox link below. If you have any questions or requests, please feel free to leave a comment. If you're interested in seeing some of these shortcuts in action, check out my video playlist I've created showing the entire workflow for building a retail store environment. I hope this breakdown of common shortcuts was useful for you. Please like and subscribe for more Blender 3D content. Thank you.